G'day folks, just a brief update tonight. It's coming at you a bit later, so I thought I'd keep it nice, short and sharp. My name's Chris Nitzo. This update's sponsored by Campbell Scientific Australia, and I'm from Oz Cyclone Chasers. Just look at the global tropics. There's activity everywhere. Southwest Indian Ocean going off. Southeast Indian Ocean going off. Coral Sea going off. Southwest Pacific going off. Northwest Pacific going off. The whole global tropics is just going crazy. Who is to blame? Well, we have the MJO to blame. The MJO is a westerly wind burst of cloud, rain, and westerly winds in the lower levels to mid levels of the atmosphere, and it has just smashed through our region here. It has intensified dramatically in the past couple of days, and it will intensify further as it goes into the southwest Pacific, and that will be testament by Monster Cyclone, which is now Tropical Cyclone Pam, going to get to Category 5, and the Tropical Cyclone that's going to be located off the Queensland coast will eventually become a three three, four, or five as well. And this is what an active MJO looks like. Look at this. Tropical low located here off the coast of the Pilbara. Tropical low located here off the coast of far north Queensland. And a big monster cyclone in the making out here to the north of Vanuatu, or north northeast of Vanuatu. Tropical Cyclone Pam has intensified to a Category 2 system, will intensify further over the next 24 to 48 hours. In fact, I would be surprised if we see intensification so slow as being shown on the computer forecast output here from the Fiji Met Bureau. By the way, these forecast track maps are all the computer models put together and weighted, so some of the computer models are a little bit more accurate than others, and so they get a bit of a weighting, which means that if um, they're tipping a particular scenario, the actual track map will sort of represent that scenario a little more than some of the other computer models which might be predicting some wild things happening. But you can see here, the biggest thing to note is this massive error margin. It still remains. So we can we can still see the system crossing or the core of the system crossing Vanuatu is still a distinct possibility and that is problematic. Now it wouldn't happen at this stage until probably late on the 12th or early on the 13th of March. So there is still time for a lot of these places to get prepared. I mean, look at it. It's not as if it's sneaking up on anyone. We've known about it for almost two weeks now. In fact, we, with the, our subscribers have known about it for about three and a half weeks. So it certainly hasn't sprung up on anyone. And they are still ample time to get ready for this system. The northern section of Vanuatu is pretty well safe out of this. It's not going to track here and go west-southwest from that position. The steering mechanisms will track it to the south. It's just a matter of will they track it south-southeast, will they track it southeast, or will they track it dead south, uh, or will they track it slightly south-southwest. Obviously, the south-southwest track is very problematic. Track forecast from the Joint Typhoon Warning Centre, slightly further to the east, but fairly similar type of scenario happening. Getting up to 130 knots, I did mention last night they were going for, I think it was about 115, I said they will ramp that up, no doubt about it, and I would be surprised if they didn't ramp 130 knots up a little bit more too, uh, just on the basis that we are expecting fairly rapid intensification of this system, we are expecting it to a cap 5, in fact, uh, most of the computer models are getting it right down into either the 900s or the sub 900s at the moment when it's at its peak. So that'll be after it crosses the islands here, though. So it won't hit its peak until it starts to adopt that south-southeast pattern. That's around about the time right here where it'll hit its peak intensity. Looking at the overall strike probabilities here of this system, we are expecting that southerly track, then the south-southwesterly track. That is, as I mentioned, problematic. Now, at this stage, this is this purple suggesting 90 to 100% chance of the system lying within 120 kilometres of any spot on that purple zone. So we have a fairly high degree of confidence there according to the GFS model members and this is problematic here, this southernmost island of Vanuatu. Very problematic forecast for them at the moment. And the problem lies that the computer models still don't agree on whether it's going to track south and then south-southwest or southeast and then south. There's just that early motion. The, the motion early is the issue. Uh, we're pretty confident in the long run it's going to just track southeast or south-southeast. But the motion in the next two to three days is so crucial, and that's where the models are failing us. They're not picking the steering mechanisms really well over the next couple of days. That's why we've got a situation where the system could be going as far west as the westernmost point of Fiji uh, to as far sorry, as far east as the westernmost point of Fiji, to as far west as the eastern islands or southeastern islands of Vanuatu.
Right, T.O., over to the Western Coral Sea. This is our new tropical low, the one that the Bureau has now put the north or far north coast of Queensland under a cyclone watch. Now, we can see some deep convection in the last few frames, particularly after, as soon as the sun went down, we started to see this convection really starting to bubble up here off the, uh, off the far north Queensland coastline, off the northeast peninsula. If we take a look at that on visible, we can really see the circulation of the system uh, located probably just on the southeastern edge of that really deep convection. Thanks to Meteo Earth, if we take a look at the expected forecast track here from the European model over the next 24 hours, we can see that the system does intensify. You can see the colours of red or the shadings of red here intensifying and you can see the system tracking very, very slowly. It's not moving very quickly out here to the west-southwest. So if we backtrack that again and show it to you in fast motion, you can see that movement of the system uh, to in a west-southwest or southwest direction. Bureau expecting this to become a cyclone at 4 p.m. tomorrow. Uh, don't be surprised if it sh starts to become or starts to show those gale force winds around its core overnight tonight, especially if that deep convection continues there. That's some very, very deep convective cloud tops there. Very cold convective cloud tops, I should say, uh, right over the top of the centre of the system there. So if that uh, continues overnight, don't be surprised if we start to see gale force winds around the system early tomorrow morning. So, But at this stage, at, at a conservative estimate, probably around uh, tomorrow, evening we'll see the system named and it will continue to track southwest tomorrow and then start to stall off the coast here of the uh, just to the northeast of Cooktown is the general prognosis from most of the computer models are predicting this stall and then attract either to the straight out here to the east or a slight shift to the north before moving east. We are not chasing this system because there's too much doubt and too much variability in the track forecast at this stage. We'll take another look at it tomorrow and make a final decision but at this point in time folks we're staying put and we'll watch this one from afar just because there's just not enough guidance to say it's going to cross and look even if it crosses further up here to the north around Cape Melville to Cohen roads will be cut. I mean, it's going to cause a lot of rainfall up here in the peninsula region. Of most interest, I guess, is the fact that uh, in the long term, this is going to be a bit of a monster itself. Uh, we can see that the Bureau of Meteorology are predicting it to become Cat 3 and then Cat 4 as we get into days 4 and 5 of the forecast. Albeit, the fact is, it's supposed to be well, well away from the Australian coastline by the time that starts happening. It's expected to push in an east to east, southeast direction. Let's take a look at some of the track forecasts from the computer models. So this only takes us out to day five, but you can see that the uh, the track forecast is quite interesting, isn't it? This is from the GFS Ensemble, and it only goes out to five days from now. So you can see the track here to the southwest, and then just sort of sits there, sits there, sits there, sits there, sits there, sits there, and then finally starts to track out here to the southeast in the five-day period. So it takes five days to get from here around and then back out to here. Uh, so that's a very, very slow motion system. No stuffing around on the CMC model. We can see here that the system tracks a little bit to the southwest from today. And then uh, it's a fairly sharp recurve and then straight out here to the east, just to the south of the Solomon Islands, is the eventual track of the system. Now, look, this is pretty aggressive. I mean, it is. it has got a little bit of support from the UK Met, but I think the motion and the timing of that motion is very aggressive at this stage. It's likely to be a little bit slower than that. In fact, a fair bit slower than that. But uh, this motion here to the east rather than the southeast, that's something that is being shown by a number of computer models. Take a look at the Euro. We can see a fairly similar solution here. Now, the Euro is out to 10 days, so I know it's difficult to difficult to compare something that's going out to 5 days uh, compared to something that's going out to 10 days. So what we'll do is we'll chop the Euro off right there because that's day 5 and we'll just focus on that first 5 days because after that things go a little bit pear shaped and we tend to get all sorts of wild solutions. Uh, so out to day 5 you can see the Euro brings this system in uh, and then loiters it off the coast here of Cooktown and then finally starts to track it away to the southeast. But it takes about two or three days for it to actually start to move anywhere in a hurry. So as of tomorrow, it'll still be moving west southwest or west southwest. Then tomorrow at some stage it will stall. Uh, and then it'll start to push away to the east. But while it's stalling, it might stall for about a day or two. So it might stall for a fair long, fairly long time. The other thing just to note here on the Euro Ensemble is that there are some outliers which actually 
don't stall it and continue it inland. But they are very much outliers. They are certainly only the bottom 10 or 20% of the computer model. So we've got an 80% probability that it's going to take this track, which is, you know, you're pretty confident when you've got 80% of computer models saying the same thing there. Interestingly, on the Euro, there is no sign of a recurve there after 10 days. Now, there was a scenario here being shown by the GFS, and I'll show you that shortly, where we do have a situation where the system could come out here after the five-day period and then suddenly recurve back to the west and hit the Queensland coast. Now, I'll show you that scenario on the GFS Ensemble. And here it is on the GFS Ensemble. You can see here about 30% of the computer models on the GFS bring this back onto the coast and whack it in as about a Category 3 tropical cyclone. Now, that's not a high probability scenario at this stage, and I dare say we might actually see it a little bit lower probability scenario with an amplified upper trough. Now, I won't go into too much detail, but the upper trough has actually been amplified in the latest run of the GFS and also the Euro. So this is, this scenario will appear to be less likely, I think, in the next couple of runs. Uh, and then we'll, I mean, look, we're talking a long way out. So the earliest this cyclone would be hitting land is seven to eight days away. So you can see there's so much variability in the next five days with the system doing nothing pretty much. Uh, so we, we really can't speculate too much with any confidence here uh, about what it might do after seven days. CMC model doesn't want a bar of that. It just says, Naruto, it's off to the southeast or east-southeast. Alrighty, looking to the west and the western cyclone, the sneaky cyclone. It's developing here quite nicely. It's not as robust in terms of the amount of convection around it, but look, it has got a reasonable structure about it already. And for a weak tropical low, it's doing quite well in terms of its structure. So uh, it's lying in a very favourable spot for development, and it's only going to get more favourable as it starts to track in a southerly direction. So, folks, it's um from the looks of this, I guess it's all systems go. I... I I really am at a little bit of a loss as to why computer models don't want to intensify this system. And if we take a look at the computer forecast model tracks from the GFS here, it, it really doesn't intensify much. It sort of maintains intensity somewhere around the 985 to 995 mark as it as it crosses the coast here to the west of Onslow, uh, around between Onslow and Exmouth is the favoured area. Um, but you do have a couple of western outliers. You do have a couple of eastern outliers, which push it closer to Karatha. But in all outliers, even those outliers are very, very weak system. And the only reason I can see for this being a weak system is it just won't spend enough time over water to, to intensify. Because if it spends enough time over water, I just cannot see anything stopping this thing. Uh, it's, it's, you know, the, the forecast models do have it crossing the coast in about two days' time or two to three days' time. And so I'm assuming... And that is only an assumption. I'm assuming that is the key reason why this thing cannot intensify. The forecast track map from the Bureau of Meteorology has a fairly slow deepening of the system, possibly by to cyclone status by 2 a.m. or overnight on Thursday, and then uh, just tracking fairly quickly here to be hitting the coast by around about overnight on Friday night into Saturday. So uh, as a Category 2 at this stage, and now as I said... Uh, this looks to be the only thing really inhibiting development until an upper trough comes through and completely shears the top of it away. But that's not going to happen probably until uh, Saturday, Sunday. The other thing to note on the Bureau track map is this huge error margin to the left which is to the west, uh, we can see that that is because some of the early computer model guidance is suggesting that the system, rather than adopting this southeast track, it adopts a more south to southwest track and then comes down the coast and then pushes in that direction. So that's why we've got an error margin a lot further to the west because of those computer models. They're not really outliers. That's about uh, just to the west of the ensemble mean. Uh, but those computer models have skewed the error margin out to the west a fair bit. And without going into detail here, that's simply because we're not exactly sure of the impact of the upper level high that is located over WA, whether, it, whether it'll exert or whether it'll orientate itself to push it more in a southwest or west-southwest direction, or whether it'll remain here to the east, which will allow, it, allow the cyclone to push in a southerly to south-southwest direction. So once again, these are all little subtleties, but those little subtleties make the make a huge difference to the end result as to which place will get hit, if any. Finally, tomorrow we start to see some of that rain actually hitting the coast of Queensland and causing some moderate to heavy falls on the north tropical coast. Anywhere north of about Townsville is the cutoff for those. 
with some lighter falls further to the south. Also, a surface trough across Queensland creating some showers and storms. Across the Pilbara and Kimberley, we have showers and storms. And also, the obvious rainfall of event from the tropical low is moving to the south or south-southeast at the time. Now, on Thursday, some of that rain is expected to start hitting the coast uh, around about that Port Hedland westwards, uh, particularly around the Karratha areas where the computer models are predicting the heaviest rain. Over the Queensland, anywhere north of about Cardwell is receiving moderate to heavy falls with some heavier falls north of Innisfail and some extreme falls up here to Cooktown and northwards. On Friday, we have the tropical cyclone, uh, the Queensland tropical cyclone, located just off the peninsula. So continuing heavy falls of rain. Some of the computer models start to drift the low, uh, the cyclone eastwards, and so therefore we're starting to see a, uh, a real a clearance of the rainfall from the most of the north tropical coast region. Uh, anywhere north of Cairns, though, can still expect some moderate to heavy falls there on the Friday. Across the Pilbara, we can see that the tropical cyclone is either approaching landfall or making landfall, and so we've got some fairly moderate to heavy falls here, uh, and are reasonably spread out too. So the general moderate to heavy falls across the Pilbara and Gascoyne region. And then by Saturday, tropical cyclone, Queensland's baby cyclone, pushes away to the east and starts intensifying, drags all the moisture out with it. So we've got very little left in terms of rainfall across the state. There is a little bit of instability here in the southeast corner, so we might see a bit of moisture return in that area. But really, folks, look at this, dry as a bone across Australia. That's not really what you want to see in the middle of the wet season, is it? And especially considering the monsoon is so strong, to see so much area of nothing in Australia is quite concerning. Uh, across uh, across WA, we've got that tropical cyclone should be continuing to push in a south southeasterly direction. So even if it makes landfall, it's likely to be tracking pretty close to the coast and or just inland of the coast. The other option, of course, is that other option I mentioned with the error margin, where the system tracks that way and then comes back in like that. Um, and if that happens, then we'll see increased rainfall around and possibly even as far south as Perth. Interesting times ahead for sure. We'll have another Cyclone update tomorrow night for you all and subscribers will have an in-depth update for you in the morning. Thanks for watching, have a good night and we'll talk again tomorrow.